This is 8-Minute Market Structure by Texture Capital, bringing you concise expert insight for better markets. And now your host, Richard Johnson. Hello, my name is Richard Johnson. I'm the founder and CEO of Texture Capital. We're a FINRA member, an SEC registered broker dealer specializing in digital securities. We help institutions more efficiently and directly participate in private markets by providing tools for tokenization, issuance, and secondary market liquidity. Uh, welcome to the very first episode of 8-Minute Market Structure. Um, it's like 8-Minute Abs, but for finance nerds, uh, where I speak with industry experts and get their take on the most important market structure issues. I'm honored to have Dave Lau as my first guest, who was in fact my inspiration for this podcast. Um, I was watching uh, CNBC a few months ago, and I heard him say, you know, if, you know, something like, if we were designing a market structure from scratch, we wouldn't build it this way. And having been in the market structure space myself for many years, um, I completely agreed with it. Um, and, uh, and that's what kind of inspired me to do this. So the format for these podcasts is fairly simple. I'm going to ask the same question to every guest. If you're building a new market structure from scratch and could change one thing, what would it be? Uh, one topic, no prep calls, just eight minutes of concise expert insights on for better markets. Um, so let me introduce Dave. He's uh, currently the founder and CEO of Urban AI, uh, an artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning company. Prior to that, Dave has held a number of roles in financial markets. Early in his career, he worked in high frequency trading, including at uh, the well known electronic market maker Citadel. Um, uh, before, uh, after that, he joined Better Markets, an advocacy, advocacy group for improved market structure, and was also a co founder and chairman of Healthy Markets, uh, as well as being an independent director for the Equitas Neo Exchange in Canada. Uh, so it's safe to say, Dave, that you know a thing or two about market structure. So let me put the question to you. If you were building a new market structure from scratch and could change one thing, what would it be? Yeah, Rich, thanks for having me. And uh, I, I appreciate it. And I, I'm excited to be a part of this. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great idea. Uh, I'm going to try my best to be concise, <laughs> which is not always my strong suit. Um, you know, I, I thought a lot about the question. And, you know, I, I think that it. I, I did say that this is not the market structure that you would choose, but it's not a terrible market structure, right? It works well. Mm -hmm. um, it, it works better than any that we've seen yet, let's say. Um, it, it works at scale, uh, obviously. It powers the U.S. economy. So, um, you know, I, I, I thought of this more of, uh, along the lines of, you know, what can we learn from it? And uh, can, we, can we get rid of the bad and, and preserve the good? And, and be creative uh, and leverage technology. You know, I think the basic, the, the most important thing that I would change is really, and probably no surprise because I'm a developer, I'm a technologist, is my, my change would be centered around technology. And it would be um, for regulators to understand markets better as complex systems. It would be for regulators to be better users of technology. It would be for the market to better leverage technology uh, and I think that there's so much opportunity in that if we were to start thinking about this from scratch um, with, with that to build on. So, you know, I would say that the, the way I approached the question was, you know, what are the principles of market structure that we're looking for? And I, I think we're looking for uh, transparency. We're looking to minimize complexity. Uh, we're looking for smart, adaptive regulation. Uh, we're looking for open competition for order flow. And we're we're looking to to avoid public subsidization or or you know inefficient uh, economics through subsidization. So I think each of those um, is pretty dependent on the intelligent and and you know sort of forward looking use of technology. Yeah, thanks. Because I guess the other the other reason I kind of want to have this conversation is that you know at Texture we are trying to build a brand new market structure ourselves. So I'm kind of uh, this is my my cheap way of getting some free advice from all the experts out there. Um, and and we are built, you know we're building a you know a new marketplace essentially leveraging blockchain technology, some of the latest technology that's that's available. Um, so I certainly you know I certainly appreciate your technology driven approach. And uh, one thing you said in the intro that was very interesting, like getting regulators more involved. Um, you know, I, you know, I'm going to ask you what you mean by that in a second. But my 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 thoughts on that is that when I when we look at blockchain and there's this kind of the, you know the, the the concept of nodes where different participants can run a node can share a copy of the distributed ledger, and then at the same time we're looking at CAT, the consolidated audit trail, which is trying to do the same thing at great cost and great time. And I've you know I've asked this question: Why aren't the regulators just 
trying to do this, you know, setting up a node on a blockchain instead of having all this reporting. But what were you thinking about having regulators more involved in the markets? Um, so I, I think I, I wouldn't say that I would have the current form of regulators more involved in markets. I think the current form of regulation is not working very well. Um, and so when I think of how should you regulate modern electronic markets, uh, the first rule of thumb would be that a regulatory agency cannot be staffed by more than 50% lawyers. Um, <laughs> Right now, maybe, yeah, yeah. Right now, the the SEC, in my understanding, the numbers that I've heard is around eighty percent lawyers, wow. um, and that's to me just a huge failure. Uh, I think that you need to transform regulatory agencies in the regulatory approach. Uh, there, there was some really interesting work done on this in term in the context of complex systems, where they talked about how regulatory agencies need to co-evolve with markets, and I really love that that idea, um, and so. I would say regulators need to be uh, technologists, traders, uh, you know, people who have been involved in markets. It can't be a revolving door. Um, they, it needs to be competitive in terms of salaries and bonuses. The best thing we could do would be to fund regulatory agencies in, in an appropriate way to incentivize people to come to them and want to do that instead of want to pass through the, the revolving door. Um, and then I think self-regulation is a horrific model. I would completely get rid of that uh, for-profit self-regulatory model. Um, and finally, I would try to figure out how can regulators creatively engage the industry. Um, many years ago, I proposed this to the SEC and the CFTC, which was create a sandbox and let industry participants uh, write uh, market manipulation algorithm, market man manipulation detection algorithms, and offer bounties. For example, you know who better to find market manipulation than traders or maybe people who used to do it? And if you could incentivize them to make more money by helping regulators find that kind of thing, uh, you would have a better system. And and so I, that's just one example of a way that you can more creatively engage the industry. That's a great idea. Um, I haven't heard that before, but we do have the SEC whistleblower program, which isn't the same thing necessarily, but that's been tremendously successful. It's been uh, very successful. Yes. And it's a great example of creative engagement with incentives. Um, people don't have access to the right data, but you know, some of them are able to find things. I think if you gave them access to the right data, or at least gave them the ability to run things on that data without them having potentially direct access, you know, there are ways around issues of privacy uh, and confidentiality while still getting the benefits of a program like that. Yeah. Um, so you get, you get, you've given me a, a very great answer and a very broad answer, but I'm going to try and pin you down. If, if you had a magic wand and there's one thing that you could, that you could change or that you could get rid of, what, what would that be? <laughs> Can I just say complexity? I, I, yes. <laughs> I think unnecessary complexity is the, the yeah. biggest problem, one of the biggest problems in markets. And, and then that kind of filters through in all sorts of ways. Um, and I'm, I'm tempted to say continuous trading. Okay. Um, but I'm not, I'm not completely sold on it. I, I do think though that that's one of the biggest questions um, is, do we really benefit from continuous trading or would discrete trading um, be a better structure? Um, and I think it's a really hard question to answer. I don't have the answer. I really liked the Budish, you know, the work that Eric Budish and, and his collaborators have done on this question. Uh, and so, you know, I do think it, my top thing would be unnecessary complexity and that's unnecessary intermediation, exchange fragmentation, uh, warped inducements. Uh, for routing order flow. So a lot of stuff fits into unnecessary complexity, but then maybe a, a more specific one would be to try and figure out if we should get just get rid of continuous trading. Yeah, on, on the complexity side, I definitely agree with you. It's one of the things when, when I left the kind of the electronic trading space, um, it was 2014 and you had, what was it, 13 exchanges, 20, 30 dart pools, yeah. all with like 10 different order types the, the possible permutations and combinations was was just it wasn't where i wanted wanted to be in my career and mm -hmm. on on the continuous trading well you got you really struck something close to my heart here because you know our ats texture is a discrete auction model as well which we think mm. is see i didn't even know that you didn't even, you didn't know that it's not a problem <laughs> at all <laughs> But uh, great conversation, Dave. Thank you very much. We could go on, but if we did, it wouldn't be eight-minute market structure. 
Thank you very much for your time. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. This has been 8-Minute Market Structure. Be sure to follow Texture Capital on LinkedIn, where we will release a new episode every week. You can also find us on Twitter at Texture underscore Capital and on the web at Texture.Capital. The foregoing discussion is for information purposes only and does not constitute a solicitation to buy or sell securities. Private securities offerings are not registered with the SEC and are considered highly speculative. An investment in private securities may result in the loss of your entire capital contribution. Blockchain is a new technology and unproven in financial markets. There is no guarantee that tokenization will enable any secondary market liquidity in the future and your investment may remain illiquid.